Table structuring is copying and or exporting a table and choosing the type of structure to go with it, like maybe just the fields. Or you can include the data with the fields when pasting or exporting it into another database. So you can see up here the name of this database is CI for Computer Inventory 2 Relationships. And down below I have a total of four tables. Well, let's go ahead and open up the Employees table with a double click. And you can see I've got a total of one, two, three, four fields. Now table structuring can be very helpful. For example, if I want to make a backup of my employees table before I make any updates, that way if I make any mistakes or do some uh-ohs, I'll have a backup. Or if I have a table that has a lot of similarities to a new table that I want to create, which can include the same field names or the same data type or type of data, and let's go ahead and close out of here and do some structuring. To do it, all you have to do is go ahead and right click on the table that you want to structure and go down to copy. It's that simple, yeah. And then just go ahead and right click anywhere within the navigation pane to paste. Or of course you can come up here on the home tab in the clipboard group and click on that big fat paste button right there. Go ahead and click on it and it'll bring up the same window and it gives us three options. When you paste, you can just include the structure or just the fields or you can include the fields and the data if there's any data from that table that you're copying from or you can append the data to an existing table. But to do this one, you have to have the same fields and the same data type, because it doesn't make sense for access to paste a field with the data type of text into a date field. So let's go ahead and do the first one, structure only, and leave it as copy of our table that we're copying from, and say okie dokie. And there we go. And let's go ahead and double click on it, and it just included the fields with the same data type as the table before. How do you know? Well. You can come in here and come up here and click on the field tab. Go to the formatting group. There's short text, short text, and this one should be number. So when I go to the employees, well, number for the first one, number for the last one, and then short text for that one. Okay. So let's go ahead and close out of that. We've got the backup. And to get rid of it, if you're like, eh, I don't really need it, right click on it and go down to delete. Are you sure? Yes. Let's go ahead and do it again because it's still on the clipboard. You can see it's still active. Click on paste. And this time we'll do the default, the structure with the data. And instead of copy of, how about if we rename that to our backup? Oh, yeah. And then hit enter on the keyboard. And there's our backup. So if we open up the original employees table, double click, and we start going just crazy or making changes, and you can see there's the pencil and I go down to the next record, it saves it, or better yet, if I go ahead and click on the row header, you see the black arrow? When I'm on that gray box, the row header, click on it, selects the entire row, and if I come up here on the Home tab to the Records group, I can destroy it. Let's go ahead and click on Delete, and once you delete a record, you can't bring it back. Are you sure? Yes. And you're like, uh-oh, I'm supposed to keep that employee. In any case, no worries, we have a backup. That's what that's for, so we can close out, Go ahead and remove all evidence that you made a mistake in the original by deleting it and saying, yes, you want to delete it. But it says, well, we got a lot of stuff on the clipboard. We've got to clear that first before you can delete the table. OK. And it's gone. Then double click and open up the backup. And hey, still there, Clancy Wiggums. Nice. And then to make sure that we remove any evidence that we had to go to the backup, we can, of course, right click on it and rename it or just better yet, you want this to be original now, you'll probably want to delete the word backup and then hit enter. And then of course go ahead and right click on that, copy paste it, and then rename the second one as your backup so we can start that over again and have a backup to our employees before we proceed with any more changes. Now let me go ahead and right click on this and go down to copy again so I can get it back on the clipboard. So when I click on paste, we've got the third and final option, append data to an existing table. And we'll go over that in just a minute because I don't have a table, well, the employees table that I'm copying from that has another table that has the same field names and data type. So we'll do that in just a minute. Let's go ahead and click cancel. And let's learn how to do this to another database going from one to another. We can, of course, go ahead and right click and copy the table and then minimize this down to the taskbar. Because on my desktop in my exercises folder, double click, I have another database and it's the books. And you're probably looking down here and wondering, what's this about? We've got CI2, which we're in. How come there's a duplicate, or what appears to be a duplicate of it? 
Well, this one, I don't know if you can see the icon, it's got a little teeny tiny lock. And you can see the extension has an L in front of the ACCDB for locked. When you hover over it, it says in the pop-up, Microsoft Access Record Locking Information. But when I close out of the database, then it opens up and it removes this locked, this ghosting as it were, the shadow. In any case, let's go ahead and just open up the other database books, double click. And in here, do we see any employees tables? No, so we can go ahead and paste it here, or better yet, let me go back to the original database, and instead of opening up another database to get a copy of the table over into it, let's just go ahead and right click on it, and how about if we export it? Sound a little bit more efficient? Well, it does to me at this point because I wouldn't have had to open up the other database first to be able to paste it in there if I can just leave this one open, the original, and export it to it. So we can come over and go down to Access, and it says, where is this Access database, or the Books database that we want to export it to? Well, come with me, good neighbor, and click on the Browse button. Takes me to the desktop, and on the desktop in the main window is the Exercises folder, so double-click. And there's my books, double-click. Now it has the address pointing right to it, so it knows where it's going to dump that or export that table into, or you could say copy and paste it into. Let's go ahead and click Okie Dokie. And then you get two options. For exporting, you don't get the append data. You just get the definition and data, or just the definition only, or the name of the fields. So let's just go ahead and include definition only, and click Okie Dokie. And then at the end, it says, hey, you want to save your steps when it comes to exporting? No, because it's just a couple of clicks. You know, right click going down to export, and then clicking on to export. You'll see in a later training video when we have something a little bit more intensive that requires a bunch of tweaking before we actually export the data that we want into another database. You know, clean it up a bit, not have everything go. Well, that gets more in step intensive, so it's something we'll save then, but for right now it's too simplistic, at least for what I want to show you. So let's go ahead and click Close, and then go back to our Books database by clicking on its corresponding button to maximize Restore Books. And do you see it here? Of course not, because we left it open it's waiting out there in the foyer, and it wants to come in. And if I closed out of the database and opened it up, it would be in. So to welcome it, or to be able to see it, we want to refresh the database, as it were, and give it a personal invite when we already have it in use or in operation by hitting the F5 key on the keyboard, and there you go. Otherwise, like I said, close out, open it back up, it'll be there. Double click, and hey, there's the structure. Isn't that nice? Now, we just have the structure. We've got the same fields and the same data type from the employees table in the other database. So, if we want to go ahead and try that third option now where we can append the records from the employees table in the computer inventory database into the employees table in the books database, well, let's go ahead and do it right now. We have to get it on the clipboard, but as you recall, I already got it on the clipboard, but if you need to, we can go back and come in here and then right click and say copy, and then come back over here. And then right click anywhere and say paste. Click and drag it down. And let's go ahead and append the data to an existing table. What table? You got to type in the same name of the table that you want to add the records into. And so if you add an extra S or something else, it's not going to work. So with the table name here, matching this one to add the data to, click Okie Dokie. And it did it. How do you know? because it's not showing here, is it? You can come up here on the Home tab and hit Refresh, or you can hit the F5 key on the keyboard. We'll click Refresh there, and oh, hey, there we go. Now that went smoothly because, again, you've got to have the same field name so it, it can map it, the employee ID to the employee ID, because if in the other table I had EID and this one employee ID, it wouldn't map or it wouldn't know what field to pull that data into. So basically, when you do the append records, you're copying and pasting from one into another, and so you don't get any data integrity issues when you're appending one table into another. It's got to have, as we discussed, the same fields and the same data type. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.